Okay, I guess now um, you all have a question that how can you convert the distribution of the features into the probability? So how can we do that? Well, uh, the answer is that that's really depending on the type of the data that you have um, in the data set. Uh, so we have the Bernoulli, I'm not sure I pronounced that right, naive base. That is for the features that we have the binary data. So 0, 1, yes or no, so those type of data. And we have the multinomial naive base. Those are for the features, those are discrete numbers. For example, 0, 3, 5, so something like that. All the integers. Okay, and we also have the Gaussian naive base. So that is default one. So that all the features are continuous. So in our case, the house price, okay, are the continuous data. So we can use that as a uh, Gaussian model. So that uh, fit uh, that convert distribution into a normal distribution. So by calculating the normal distribution. So that guessing normal distribution. So we convert the distribution into uh, the guessing distribution so that we can calculate the p values. Or we can have kernel naive base. That is also for the continuous numbers. However, we estimate the likelihood of each feature with kernel densities. So this will be more accurate then all the other threes okay so that is result if for the same for the price if i use in guessing distribution you can see this may not fit perfectly with the distribution however if i use kernel densities that will fit perfectly with the distribution okay so if you see the difference so kernel density will give you probably higher accuracy on the training data and also that will also lead a problem of the overfit because that may give you a very high accuracy on the training but low performance on the testing okay uh, so let's see that we compare that one so here we have the naive base and we already know that naive base uh, by default we are using Gaussian, and we know we simulate a distribution um, by using a normal distribution However, if we replace that one with by using kernel naive bay, which is actually exactly here. So let's bring that one. And okay, so let's report both results. And you can see that's the kernel naive bay. And if you compare this one against the normal distribution, so let's look at the price. So that is normal distribution for the price. However, in the kernel naive base, you can see the estimation is much more like the real data. So if we look at the real data, okay, and you can see the distribution is much more like the real data. So that means accuracy will be higher and also potentially it will be a more overfit issue. Okay. So let's check whether or not it is overfit or not. So to check whether or not it is overfit or not, so we can use a split test. So if we search split and split validation, okay, and let's just right now remove those models. And let's first, let's do the naive bay. So guessing model, And we pass the model out there. And let's apply the model and also classification. OK, and let's say we want to do the kappa and also accuracy. And this is the P of training. Let's pass that one to the result and let's do the same thing for the testing 
So this is P of testing. Okay, so we bring the data and we bring the test data. We bring the model and also test the data and we report the performance. Okay, and here again we split the data so 70% go for training, 30% go for testing. And automatic means that if those are categorical data, so that will be used stratified. But let's just use stratified uh, for sure. And let's go up to the process and let's report the both result. And let's see if there's an overfit for the guessing. We can see copper for the testing is 0 0.3 or 48. And also copper for this one is 0 0.371. So um, it's not bad in terms of copper. Uh, but in terms of accuracy, that they are all much similar. However, so let's let's see if the and let's replace this one with kernel. So we can also replace and that is in the predictive kernel. Okay. And also you can see the uh, Laplace correction is used to, to avoid zero probabilities. Okay, so um, it's always recommend to always check that one. And now let's run it. Okay, so the kappa on the testing actually increased a little bit. However, on the training, it's increased a lot. So it's 0 0.6. So basically, the accuracy on the training and also testing are much higher than the guessing. However, the difference of the, those accuracy also become bigger. So that it's, it's more like an overfit issue. Although the accuracy increased on both of them. Okay, so that's really depending on the type data. So if all the data are binary, you can choose this one. All the data are discrete numbers, you can choose this one. If you have at least one feature is guessing, and you, you probably need to choose this one, guessing knife base. However, if you want a more accurate result, high accuracy on the training set, you can choose kernel naive base, but that may um, be an overfit issue, okay? So that might be an overfit issue. So that keep in mind. Okay, to summarize. So Laplace correction can be used to avoid zero probabilities. So, so for example, if you have a lot of uh, features that are zero in such category, so this can be used to avoid zero probabilities. So just remember that always check that one if possible. Naive Bay is very fast to train or make prediction. And also hopefully that process is easy to understand. So next semester, next section when we talk about neural networks, you will see that those models are very hard to understand the process. The model works very well with high dimensional data. So that means if you have so many features, like the uh, you have a lot of columns, okay, like 100 or 1000 columns. So naive bay works very well with high dimensional data. It also often used on very large data set. So that means you have a lot of sample size. So it's very long and also it's very wide, the, the table. Because of the efficiency, so it can be used for making predictions in the real time. So that's pretty cool. And it has been successfully it has been extremely success in the text classification, such as spam filtering, so that's identifying spam emails, and also sentimental analysis. Okay, so in this week's lab, so we are going to use Naive Bay to classify some Twitter data, and you all can see that how success Naive Bay can be in the text classification.